Hi guys, welcome back to another video. This is a very specific one that I have been wanting to make. Um, and it's not going to be for everyone who's watching my channel. But if you're interested and just curious, you haven't had a pelvic injury before, then continue watching. If you had have a pelvic injury before, I hope that this can give you some encouragement if you're looking to get pregnant or if you already are pregnant and you're planning for your labor and delivery. So before I had gotten pregnant, my family especially was really concerned about um, me carrying a baby because I fell off a cliff 27 meters exactly um, about eight and a half years ago. And I broke many, many bones, but relevant to this video, I shattered my pelvis in seven places. <clears throat> I broke the wings off my sacrum and um, I had a rod put in from left to right all the way through. And then on the right side, I shattered and multi or I broke, fractured my pelvis in multiple places and had a rod put in through my superior um, pubic ramus. And this is very important to know. I'll show you a picture of my pelvis here, <laughs> my x-ray. I'm also going to show you a quick little video. Me and my mom uh, were at a checkup about six weeks after my surgery eight and a half years ago. And my, I was 28 years old at the time. I never felt the desire to carry a child. I didn't think that that was in my future. So my mom actually, who always felt like I was going to become a mother, asked the question if I could give birth vaginally. And the doctor said yes. Happy wow. girl. Wow. Tell them the good news about your pelvis. You can have babies. I can have babies. <laughs> Naturally, vaginally. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Woohoo! That always kind of stuck in the back of my mind while I was thinking about getting pregnant. Um, my pregnancy was planned, but I hadn't really looked more into if I could give birth vaginally with this injury um, until after I was actually pregnant because I was open to a cesarean if that was going to if that was an option, of course it would be if I had pelvic issues. And I just figured if I was going to have a lot of pain in my pelvic region during my pregnancy, then that was a sacrifice I was willing to make to bring a child into this world because my um, view on having a child had changed drastically. Right? I really, really felt the desire to become a mom. So um, if you're new to this channel, uh, yeah, I fell off a cliff eight and a half years ago, 27 meters and uh, went through quite the recovery. I gave birth seven weeks ago to a beautiful baby boy, vaginally without any medication um, outside, just right outside here on my terrace and in my bathtub. And it was extremely successful. I had a wonderful pregnancy as well. Um, but I wanna read to you guys, and I'm gonna leave these studies linked um, in my description box down below so you can go read for yourself, and I challenge you to do that. Um, some of the conclusions that I found in these studies relating to this. So uncomplicated pregnancies and deliveries are possible after pelvic pressure, after pelvic fracture. As soon as I read that, it was like, whew, weight lifted. I'm in, I'm in the right space, <laughs> like getting pregnant. You know, I was really excited about that. The new cesarean delivery rate amongst these women is significantly increased with over half related to patient and obstetrical preferences. So in the States, it's like 31%, I think, right now for cesareans. So I think it jumps up to like 62% um, of a rate for these women with pelvic fractures that they did a study on. Fracture pattern, minor malalignment, and retained hardware are not absolute indications for cesarean delivery. Neither surgical care of the pelvis or retained fixation precludes successful vaginal delivery. Development of guidelines and objective indications for trial of normal labor after pelvic fracture is needed. Genitor urinary, genitor urinary and sexual dysfunction can be expected in women of childbearing age with pelvic fractures. Functional outcomes of women with pelvic fractures are related to fracture pattern and whether they were treated with surgery. Women treated non-operatively and those treated operatively with fixation sparing the pubic symphysis can deliver children vaginally. This is very key. So as I said before, in my pelvis, um, for one, you know, I had a rod going through my sacrum, which kind of, I had that rod removed. I think it could have been different if that rod was still in place because your sacrum opens and moves um, during labor. Um, and I surprisingly didn't have any like 
unfamiliar pain there whenever I was giving birth, but I have been sore longer uh, postpartum than I expected to be in that area. And I think because of this injury, <clears throat> um, and you know, like I said before, on the right side, my superior, uh, ramus, pubic ramus was where I had the rod. And so my pubic symphysis was completely spared. There was no blockage there. Um, whenever I opened, sure, my rod and pelvis moved around, but I, during labor, didn't feel anything that was, that felt like sharp, um, serious pain, like unfamiliar pain that I should be worried about. Thank God. 26 women had children after their uh, pelvic fracture. This is a study. 10 of them, 38%, delivered vaginally. 16, 62% had cesarean <clears throat> sections. Four, 40% of the women who delivered vaginally had surgical fixation of their fracture, including rammy screws, like me, and or sacroiliac screws, like me. Our data suggests the cesarean section rate is still more than double standard norms, but vaginal delivery after pelvic fracture, even in those treated with surgical fixation, sparing the pubic symphysis, is possible. They stated this multiple times in the study, and honestly, like reading that, that was all that I needed to hear um, in order to have a very peaceful, calm, trusting pregnancy. Like if it was possible, I was going to do it. Sure enough, I did. And I really give a lot of credit to my surgeons. I had the best surgeons in Las Vegas at UMC. Um, and because of them, how great of a job that they did. And yoga and just putting so much emphasis on my pelvis over the last eight and a half years is why I had such a successful pregnancy and labor. Because I honestly had... Um, almost zero pain in my pelvis during pregnancy, which is crazy because pelvic girdle pain and round ligament pain is, it's very, very common for women who don't even have any type of pelvic injury in their history. Um, so I really think a lot of the strengthening and focus mind to muscle <clears throat> exercises that I've done for eight and a half years really helped and contributed towards that. He likes wa watching me talk right now. <laughs> so I wanted to put this information out there. And if this is re relevant to you, I encourage you to go read these studies, follow your intuition, talk with a professional as well. Talk with someone who has experienced what your goal is. So I, I love that um, whenever it comes to labor, like whatever labor you, you imagine and dream for yourself, Find someone else who has done it successfully. And I think the same with someone who has had a similar injury to you and has had amazing outcomes. Listen to them. Ask them questions um, so you can get the same results. And I'm so thankful every single day for how everything worked out. I really trusted my body and looked at the science as well. And I had a lot of peace um, through all of that. And it led to beautiful, healthy pregnancy, labor, child, postpartum mother, all of the above. So I couldn't be more grateful. If you guys have any more questions that I think I could help you with, leave them um, in the comment section. Um, if I feel qualified or I can just share from my experience, then um, I will answer back at those. And like I said, go check out the studies in the description box below. I hope this helps. Um, some people out there, um, I'm glad that I can post this video to YouTube. I feel very lucky to be able to do so. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.